Hello, and welcome to my channel, The Magic of Math, where together we will endeavor to master math concepts. Please show your support by subscribing and clicking on the bell for new video upload notifications and consider sharing a video. Today, we will learn what is an integer? That is the question we will answer. So to our objectives today are that students will be able to determine if a number is an integer and students will use integers to represent real life situations. Here's the question I would like you thinking about and be able to answer by the end of this video lesson. What are real life situations that you use integers? So if you're new to learning about integers, I'd like to think that you already use integers in your everyday life and just aren't aware. So let's discover together about integers. First, we'll start with the definition of an integer. Integers are the set of whole valued positive and negative numbers and zero. So basically you're counting numbers and all of their opposites. So one, two, three, four, and so on. And then zero and going left on your number line with negative values, negative one, negative two, negative three. So here's a number line. Notice that it starts at negative five, this arrow showing you that it goes on infinitely in the left direction, more negative, zero, and then positive, infinitely to the right. All of these values on this number line are integers. We have a set of numbers here. One through five are positive integers. Then we have this set on the left that are all our negative integers. So there are different types of integers. All of these numbers are integers. These are positive integers. These are negative integers. Then we have one other integer. It's zero. Zero is an integer and it's neither positive nor negative. So it's an integer, but it has no sign to it. It's not positive and it's not negative. So think of it somewhat as neutral. So if you have nothing, it can't be positive and it can't be negative. A lot of times I like students to think about integers as money. Students love money. They love to go to the store and they buy things. Positive integers is the amount of money you have to spend. Negative integers are the cost of something, what you're going to take away out of your wallet when you spend money. So think of negative integers as taking something away. Fractions are not integers. So sometimes to understand what something is, we need examples of what something is not. So fractions are not integers because they're not whole numbers. They're parts of wholes. So looking at this number line, we can see zero and remember zero is an integer. And then we have values that fall between zero and one on our number line. We have one third and we have two thirds. Integers are your whole numbers, your counting numbers, and their opposites. This is not a whole number. It's a part of a whole. It's one third of a whole. So the only integers on this number line are negative one, zero, and one. Negative two thirds, negative one third, one third, and two-thirds are numbers that are not integers. In future lessons, you'll learn that we call those rational numbers. So negative one, zero, and one are the only integers on this number line. The fractional values between the integers on the number line are not integers. Also, decimals. Decimals are not integers. So here's our number line. The only integers on this number line are negative one, 
0, and 1. Noting on purpose I put these values negative 1.0. Because this value can be written without the decimal point 0, it's still an integer. It could be written as just negative 1 and be equivalent to the way this is written. 0, 0.0 could be written as just 0. So even though it's written like this with 0 in the tenths digit, it still represents 0. Same with 1.0. However, we have negative 0 0.5 and positive 0 0.5, and these are parts of a whole. So you could read this as 0 0.5, or you could read it as 5 tenths, which is equivalent to 1 half. These are parts of wholes and not integers. Beware. A numerical value must be in simplest form before you can determine if it is an integer. So let's look at a few examples and determine if the numerical values are integers. So an example here is negative six thirds. Six divided by three is two and it's negative, negative two. So this simplifies to be an integer. Negative two represents this fraction in simplest form. So although this is a fraction, it simplifies to an integer. Seven over two is not an integer because it's in simplest form. Seven halves, or you could write it as three and one half, but it cannot be simplified to an in integer. And then we have 13.0, which can be written as 13, which is an integer. And negative 5.9, which cannot be written any different way. You could write it as a fraction, but you cannot write it as an integer. So your turn. I'm going to ask you to pause the video, look at these values, and mark whether or not you think they're true or false. Come back and hit play when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. So eight is a whole number, it's a counting number, it's an integer. 12 over four simplifies to three. 12 fourths is equivalent to three. 12 divided by four is three, and three is an integer. Negative 0 0.64 or a negative 64 hundredths cannot simplify to an integer. It's always going to be part of a whole. 4.3 is in simplest form and not an integer because it's not a whole or its opposite. Negative two and one half is not an integer, cannot be written as a whole number or its opposite. 17.0 can be written as 17, so that's an integer. Zero is an integer and negative six is an integer. Let's talk about integers in your world. Temperature. Temperature is a place where integers exist. Think of a thermometer as a vertical number line. So we have zero degrees and then going up shows our temperature increasing or rising. And then below zero are our negative temperatures. So we know that when it goes below zero, it's very cold. Freezing is right in here at 32 degrees, if this is a Fahrenheit thermometer. 100 or 90, very hot summer day. So we can talk about temperature being positive, negative, or zero degrees. Now I want you to note there are other places in here to have um, 42 degrees, and you could have 42 and a half degrees. So not all temperature values are integers but some temperature values are. So if you say 42 degrees, that's an integer. If you say that it is 40 and a half degrees or 40.7 degrees, that does not represent an integer. Changes in temperature can be represented with integers. We can say that the temperature increased 10 degrees, which would be a positive 10. 
We could say that the temperature dropped 12 degrees overnight, which means that's a negative integer. It went down and you'd want to say decreased or negative. So a negative sign can sometimes represent going down or decreasing. So the temperature dropped 10 degrees after sunset could be represented by negative 10. So we could say the change in temperature was negative 10 degrees. And then you would know that the temperature decreased or went down, it dropped 10 degrees. If there wasn't a negative sign there, we could say that the temperature increased by 10 degrees. Noting that when you make a, write down a negative number, you need the negative sign, but when you write a positive number, you don't need to write the plus sign. It's just assumed that a number without a negative sign is positive. So the temperature increased eight degrees after lunch, and there's that positive eight, which would be okay, but typically you're not going to see the plus sign, you're just going to see eight. More integers in your world, let's talk about sea level. So we have the ocean here, and sea level is the distance above or below a shoreline. Our shoreline right here represents zero. So this bird is 19 meters above sea level, and the fish is 24 meters below sea level. So you could use the word below, notice there's no negative sign here because it's denoted with a word, or I could mark my diagram with a negative 24 meters showing that it is below zero feet, or meters, this is meters. The bird doesn't have any sign here, but we know that it's up, there's no negative sign, so it's above the shoreline by 19 meters. Now we have hot air balloon, and we're gonna talk about vocabulary words of ascend and descend. And you can see while I was talking that our air, hot air balloon rose. It went up, that's ascending. Ascending means to rise. So if the hot air balloon ascends 10 miles, that means it rose or rises 10 miles up. It left the ground and it went up. Airplanes also do this, they go ascend. If you ever hear about that, we're going to begin our descent. Descending is when you go down. So if a hot air balloon descent 10 miles, it means it drops 10 miles towards the ground. So using the word descend represents a negative value. So when it ascend, it went up positive 10, descend negative 10, representing that it dropped or fell, lowered. Money. Money is a great way to use integers. There's some vocabulary words you need to understand to go along with this. So I have this green. If you've ever heard somebody say, oh, when you're in the money, you're in the green or you're in the red, green means is good. Money is green. You have money. Think about that. That's positive. So money is green. Dollar bills are green. That's positive value. You have money. You deposit money. That is a positive action. So if you receive money from a birthday gift or you work and you got paid and you put your money in the bank, you deposited it into your bank account to use later on. That's a positive transaction. You may have received money as a gift or working and when you deposit it in the bank for future spending, it is a positive transaction. The other one, we say it's in the red. If you owe somebody money, that's a negative, and we usually show it red. If you're in the red, that means you don't have money, you owe money. So when you withdraw money from an ATM or a bank account, that's a negative transaction that represents a negative number. So if you were writing it down on paper and you had got birthday money, you'd have plus or an invisible sign, $100. You go to the bank and you take out 20, that would be negative 20 or subtract 20. All right, your turn. I'm going to ask you to think about negative integers. And are they always blank, then zero? What word could you put 
in that spot to make the statement true. Come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back. Negative integers are always less than zero. Always less than zero. Positive integers are always blank than zero. Go ahead and pause. Come back when you're ready. Positive integers are always greater than zero. So remember our number line or your thermometer and thinking about where the positive values are in reference to zero and the negative values. Your turn again. Blank is neither negative or positive. Come back when you're ready. Welcome back. Zero is neither negative or positive. All right, your turn. Fill out the chart. True or false? Go ahead and pause. Come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So six thirds, six divided by three simplifies to two. Two is an integer. So that is true. Zero is an integer. Ten fourths will never simplify to an integer. Ten fourths could be written as two and one half or 2.5, but that is not an integer. We have a part of a whole along with the two. Negative seven is an integer. Negative 12 over two is equivalent to negative six. 12 divided by two is six. Negative six is an integer. One is an integer. And negative 4.8 is false because negative 4.8 cannot be written as a whole number or its opposite. It's negative four and eight tenths, negative 4.8. Your turn. I would like you to use an integer to represent this real world situation. You withdrew $20 from an ATM. Go ahead and pause. Come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So I hope you remembered the negative sign. If you had the dollar sign with it, that's fine. I'd take that as if you were my student. But the most important thing here is that you have a negative sign because you're taking money out of your account. You're removing it. You're taking it away. That is a negative amount. Try another one. What integer represents the hiking club hiked to the top of the mountain 3,200 feet above sea level? What number could represent the amount that they hiked? Go ahead and pause. Welcome back. I would just write 3,200. If you put feet there, I'd be fine with that. But just know that you don't need a unit when they're asking you for an integer. They're just asking you for a number. If you wrote a positive sign next to it, I would take that too. But know that you don't need it. The temperature dropped 22 degrees while you were sleeping. What integer would you use here? Go ahead and pause. Welcome back. I hope you remembered the negative sign because the temperature dropped. It went down. So we want a note to go down on our thermometer. And there you have it. That is what an integer is. I hope you got a lot out of this video today and you enjoyed talking about integers and I hope you will come back and join me soon for a future video. I hope you all have a great day.